Welcome back. One of the many good things the media revolution brings is the virtual realignment of fragmented people of common heritage and interests such as Africans. Africa, Africa, look all and Rastafari. Previously, descendants of the motherland residing here in Jamaica, for example, get only what a small group of Western media wish to tell us about the continent, most of which turned out to be half-truths at best. Xenophobia violence seems to be spreading. Today, the free flow of information via social media between the children of Africa living in the West and those on the continent is recreating the Afro community. <laughs> Perhaps the most powerful pillar of this virtual community is the sharing of art and culture, in particular music. And as the contemporary sounds of Africa flow across the oceans, reggae, which is deeply rooted in the motherland, goes in the opposite direction. Finding favor with great ease both in terms of performance and production on the continent. We're joined in this segment today, right here on stage, by a Nigerian queen of music. Sheshe is her name, right now, right here on our stage. Sheshe. Hello. So good to meet you. So good to meet you too. Thanks for coming and, and I hope Jamaica is treating you well. Thank you, Hav, for having me, and I'm loving this place so much. Oh, yeah? Yes. Your first time? My first time, yes. How long now since you've reached? We have been here for just three days, but I feel like I've been here a long time in a good way. I feel like I've been here for about a week. Okay. But in a good way, just because, you know, uh, we've been doing so much hmm. already. We've met so many different people. We've done some radio. Okay. Yeah. So before coming, Yes. how did you perceive Jamaica? Well, I, I grew up in uh, North London, in Tottenham, mm -hmm. and um, Tottenham is predominantly Jamaican. Yes. And a lot of my friends were Jamaican. Mm -hmm. Two of my nannies were Jamaican. Okay. So I have a very, very rich understanding of Jamaicans. No. Oh. Um, and knowledge of them. And so, you know, I, I kind of always figured it would, you know, the people would be warm like this and, the, the, you know, the island would be you know, this beautiful and the food would taste this great. I've been eating Jamaican food for a long time, Caribbean food. So it, it's matching somewhat to your perception. Yeah. The reality definitely. is matching your perception. Yeah, and I'm here now and it's a lot like Nigeria, mm -hmm. um, aside from the fact that you guys have a lot more, I mean, if I'm comparing Kingston to Lagos, then obviously <clears throat> Kingston has a lot more greenery. So you're fully based, you're now in, in Nigeria? Fully based in Nigeria. I mean, I started off my, uh, my singing dream in the UK, mm -hmm. um, where I schooled, I spent most of my life. I was in a girl band actually, five piece girl band. Mm -hmm. And uh, we consisted of two white girls, one uh, mixed race girl, myself, and one, um, uh, you know, well, she was Mauritian, but she kind of represented the Asian uh, uh, demographic, right? Okay. And so we all came together and we decided to uh, form a girl band called From Above. And, um, and, and a young man called Matthew Knowles, who most people know as Beyonce's dad, mm -hmm. was in London one year, along with Beyonce, and he uh, got tipped that there was a girl band rehearsing in Covent Garden, in, which, is a, which is an area in London, okay. where we used to have our rehearsals. And so he came into the studio and he said, hey, I'm gonna sign you guys. You know, I can make you the next Destiny's Child stroke Spice Girls. And so I think the following week we were signed to, to Music World Entertainment. Then the following month we were signed to Sony. Then that following month we moved to Houston. Mm -hmm. And we spent most of our time in the House of Darion where we underwent a lot of training, a, a lot of development, artist development development um, and we did shows and we supported Beyonce on tour and her I Am tour Oh yes. and then MTV picked us up uh, and shot a reality show called Breaking From Above which mm -hmm. is actually on their archives still till this day. Mm. So by the time the group had broken up and I had moved back to Nigeria, Africans already knew who I was because they had seen the reality show called Breaking From Above. Okay, nice. That was aired in about 166 countries across the world. Mm. So you know it was kind of uh, a, a nice, easy sort of like entrance into the right. Nigerian music. So you were fully, they accepted you <clears throat> yeah, they immediately? Did. Because I went in also under the mentorship of people like Two Face Idibia, mm -hmm. who sang African Queen. Okay. And so he kind of introduced me onto my first Nigerian stage, in my first Nigerian 
audience mm -hmm. was through Too Faced Adibia. So, you know, he's like king out there. What creative control did you have of your work in terms not of... Much not much at all. Not much at all. I mean, everything was pretty much run um, and uh, guided okay. and dictated by Matthew Knowles and his whole management regime. I call it a regime mm -hmm. because he's a, he's a disciplinarian. And we went underwent a lot of um, the, the school of you know, the training that uh, Destiny's, Child went, Destiny's Child went through. We mm -hmm. had to sit there and watch a lot of their footage, when, you know, growing up and a lot of their training. And we worked with most of their team members, Miss Tina Knowles, their styling, their vocal trainers, their choreographers and everything. I mean, it was the wildest and most exhilarating and the most amazing time of my life. Wow. And it equipped me to be able to do what I do now as an independent artist in Nigeria on the African continent who is also now an international artist on my own. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I really pay most of the, um, the, 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 the respect to, to that stage in that part of my life, that time of my life. So how different is your music now um, from what it was there? Well, I... I as, a, as a solo artist. As a solo mm -hmm. artist. Mm -hmm. I, I, I recently released a, a solo album, which was um, produced by myself, executive produced by myself and members of my team, and uh, released under my label called Star Girl. Um, it's an independent label, mm -hmm. um, and it is a mixture of uh, Afrobeat, reggae, contemporary, and world music. Okay. All right. All right. Stick it right there. Let's just take a mashup of of that of yeah. your music right here. <laughs> nice. Now you get a you get a feel of the kind of music she's putting out. The video that you watched called Murder, mm -hmm. uh, featuring Pataran King and Shady. They Pataran King and Shady are Nigerian male artists. Yes. Uh, Pataran King. Yeah, I've we, actually we know a thing heard, or two about it. <laughs> I've actually heard a couple of his songs while in being Jamaica, in Jamaica. Right. So I was quite yeah, I was quite shocked about that, but very happy. But he's based in London, isn't he? He's based in Nigeria. We're all Nigerians. Uh, no, he's based in Nigeria now. Yeah. But no, he was, he's always been based in he's Nigeria. He's always. Oh really? In fact, okay. in fact, I, when I got to Nigeria. He yeah. hadn't even blown. He was still trying to uh, um, be who the pattern can he is now. Yes. So it's really amazing to be part of this generation and this time when African music and Caribbean music mm -hmm. is so powerful that you don't even know anymore where the artist is actually from. Yes. When you go to places like the UK, or America, Absolutely. you hear an Afrobeat song and you don't even know anymore that it sounds African. It just sounds like great fresh music. Wizkid, who you saw in Crazy, mm -hmm. um, featured with me in Crazy, he just had a number one Billboard USA hit song with Drake yes. for One Dance. And that's Wizkid. That's Wizkid, my friend, my boy. Yeah. The person that helped me in the Nigerian music industry when I first got there four and a half years ago. And he's always been in Nigeria his whole life. But isn't it such a great time to be alive? And isn't it for me such a great time to be a Nigerian artist or even recognized as a Nigerian artist? I'm, I'm, I'm really, really happy and proud to say that um, our music now is, is, is getting the, the recognition that it, it deserves. Right. Um, and I'm happy to be in Jamaica, Jamaica, talking about my music, my mm -hmm. music. And I'm happy to have a record deal with Island Records in the UK. Um, and they're about to release Murder globally. What's the reggae scene like in, huge, in Nigeria? Huge. It's West African sound. Mm -hmm. And because reggae is a global universal language, mm -hmm. and because Jamaicans, West Indians made it so global and so huge, yes. um, we had to obviously take part of that celebration and make it part of our culture and our music too. Because it's very natural, isn't it? It's very natural. I, 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 I was in the studio with um, King Jami uh, two days ago. And, um, you know, he just played a, a beat, a reggae beat, um, produced by um, a producer called Danny, and I just wrote on it like it was natural. And mm -hmm. we just voiced something, and we came with a song, a big song that we're going to yes. put out very soon. And you will find that if, if given a beat, an African beat, mm. 
from Nigeria, for example. A lot of African people sound like soca. They get on it. <laughs> a lot yeah. like, yeah. They just get on it like that. It's like very that. natural. Natural, very natural. I mean, Movado has collaborated with a, with a Nigerian artist. Mm -hmm. Sean Paul has done a collaboration with um, Timaya, who is like one of the biggest Nigerian acts. They're actually going there and performing. Beanie man, they're all they're coming to visit. They're coming to perform. They're coming to do collect. They would we're doing. We're coming to you guys. You guys are coming to us. The mm -hmm. that gap is being bridged. Oh yeah. And everything that was broken is being mended now. And mm -hmm. I'm one of the people, one of the artists, that is making it a point in my career, to be a part of that mend. I know you're doing well in the West, right? <laughs> but are you doing as well? In, in the rest of Africa? In, in Africa, yes. No, actually, I'm doing better, obviously, right at the moment in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, uh, people will say that, oh, Shea Shea is one of the top, you know, three females in Africa. Okay. And, and I would say, well, I want to be, I want to, I'm happy about that, obviously. Um, and one of the reasons why I signed my record deal with Island Records in the UK is because I want to be one of the top African females in the world so that I can speak oh, yes. the truth. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of work for the UN yes. at the moment. I'm speaking at the University of West Indies on Friday. Great. I'm giving a lecture about music, its business, and how I got to where I got to as an independent female artist in the music industry. Mm -hmm. I run my own business, I have my own label. I'm not trying to get the whole world to basically kind of rebel and say, hey, you know, we don't need labels anymore, because we do. I signed a record label, <laughs> label deal last recently. But what I am trying to say is that being an African woman, um, the stigma, even just on my color alone, mm -hmm. you know, hasn't been a, you know, an easy one to kind of, you know, get out of. But I feel like not having a mom, not having a dad, not having much to kind of really say, okay, this is who I am, yes. um, leaves me with nothing more than to say, okay, I am African, and I can do anything I put my mind to, in or out of Africa, mm -hmm. and I can be a voice for girls and women that are like me. Aren't you Pepsi's ambassador? I am a Pepsi brand ambassador, and I'm very for proud of that too. For the entire continent, is Yes. It? Yeah. Oh, not for the entire continent, for Nigeria. For Nigeria. Pepsi okay. don't have um, ambassadors uh, in, uh, in other the countries oh, no? in Africa, no, only in Nigeria. Oh. And then obviously in the Western world, you have Beyonce for that side of the world. But you, they don't okay. have like ambassadors in different countries of Africa mm -hmm. for Pepsi, no. They only have ambassadors in Nigeria. But every time I travel out of Nigeria to any African country, I always go and pay a visit to the Pepsi plants and take pictures and say, hey. You've been to the one here in um, Jamaica? We, we're, we're planning on that. Are you planning on we're that? We're planning on that. Planning. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. um, but what support do they give you, though? Your music, your career? The Pepsi, they yeah. give me a very, very great platform. Mm -hmm. um, they also, I mean, it's very good for my CV, very good for my resume. Oh, yes. to be an ambassador of such a powerful brand mm -hmm. that is world renowned um, it is it highly it highly influences um, people of my age group and you know and below and above mm -hmm. and I guess I just fit right in the uh, demographic that they need to basically reach you know oh yes so. they could ask for a better ambassador so what Thank else you. can you tell us about your business in Jamaica my business in Jamaica, so like I said, I mean, I'm here primarily to, to really um, impart my knowledge um, mm -hmm. on the students at the University of the West, West Indies, Indies yeah. um, about how to build your brand and your business in music and how mm -hmm. to basically just empower yourself and equip yourself with the mm -hmm. knowledge that you need to make it. There's a problem that Jamaican artists are facing at the moment. What is that? Um, dancehall, Jamaican dancehall. You, you can make a distinction between reggae and dancehall, right? Of course. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So the dancehall artist in Jamaica, there, there's big debate, this raging debate going on about Drake's sampling of dancehall. Lots of it in in his. The same debate is going on in Africa right now. That's that what I he, wanted to ask. That about. he sampled um, the Afrobeat. So I, but there's so, nothing wrong in that. It just no, means our fine. music is going all over the world and just you know. As we say, um, Africa's children are coming back together. That's it. And so this is part happy. of the process. Right. And so, but it, it's interesting because um, th there's this debate about um, rebranding too going on. Right. Like Afrobeat, for example, maybe called something else. 
like, right. like they're trying to like a tropical house or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't know. I do don't know you, about Do that. you have that? You're not, you're not. I'm not familiar with that. They, they, I would hate to find out that tr that you know Afrobeat has been the title has been changed to something else because that means you know people like Fela Kuti, mm -hmm. uh, Fela, Fela Nicola Kuti, kind of basically just died in vain, and and that's not really what it was about. He basically brought Afrobeat to the forefront. Mm -hmm. And he lived and died for Afrobeat music and the truth and knowledge and rhythm. Yes. You understand? Mm. Wow. Well, my dear, all I can say now is walk good. <laughs> In Jamaica, <laughs> we say walk good. Thank Meaning you. that we wish you well Thank and you we so hope much. you'll enjoy. I'm Jamaica. Gonna, I love Jamaica. The little piece of Africa in the West. Yes. And I'm so happy to be here. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy that you gave me the opportunity to be on your show, you know, to basically speak so that people can hear, you know, what I have to say. Well, we're more about happy music. to have you, Shay Shay. Thank you. On our stage. Thank you so much. Walk good Thank again. You, and my darling. Take it easy. All right. There you have her right here on stage, Shay Shay. Wow. Want to watch, want to listen to, want to check out, want to know more about. With us still to come, the laugh out loud reason RDX is back on our stage this week. Hey, thanks for watching our video. Well, you know, there's so much more where that came from, and all you have to do is to click subscribe and be on stage always.